Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome to part two of the weekly OTRS Central Q&A. So like I said at the beginning of the first video, make sure you smash that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the channel. And if you're not, what's wrong with you? Click that bell, what the hell, so that way you're notified of new videos that come up on this channel. And follow the show at OTRS Central is the Twitter handle, so that way anytime I upload new content, you will be updated. And when I do these Q&A videos, you can actually partake in the asking of the questions. Got it? Get it? Got it? Good. All righty. The Titan Zero is going to kick us off today. Would Vince be a better or worse president than Donald Trump? I think there are incredible similarities between the two as businessmen and as human beings, although you could certainly argue Vince has been infinitely more successful as a businessman, even with all of his failures, uh, than Donald Trump has, and I would agree with that assessment and assertion. Um, it probably would be incredibly similar. Two guys that you know are narcissistic, two guys that are egomaniacs, two guys that are about control and power and ego and all of those types of things. Now, some of you don't like that. Some of you might like that. It's not much of much a statement of that. The question is just, would he be a better or worse president than Donald Trump? And I'm just saying, I don't know that there would be much of a difference. I don't. I, I could say effectiveness in terms of cementing kind of that right wing and far right base. Trump's probably more skilled at that and better than that. Uh, than McMahon would probably be. Um, but I think it would be very similar. I really do. 1-800-Jordy asked, or it might be 1800-Jordy. Who the hell knows? We're going to go with 1-800-Jordy. We're going to call him Scheming Jordy, just like it used to be Scheme Gene with the 900 numbers. What mid-carder or jobber in the 80s and 90s era of wrestling could have been a main event player if they had wrestled today? Um, certainly the Junkyard Dog. Now, I'm thinking of this in relation to, like, WWE. I know your question is not necessarily WWE-specific. I'm kind of assuming it is, but um, if you're just saying overall, like, obviously JYD in some of the territories like Mid-South and so forth was a main event guy. Um, so maybe let, let me change that a little bit. What mid-carder or jobber in the 80s or 90s era of wrestling could have been a main event player if they had wrestled today? Like you look at the, a lot of those smaller guys, the cruiserweights and shit from back in the day, they would all have chances to be main event guys. Now, whether that equates to um, main event draws or not remains to be seen. But the way the whole business is, like Dean Malenko would have been a main eventer. Like Daniel Bryan, my ass. Folks would rage so much for Dean Malenko, they would have literally shut down a WrestleMania if Dean Malenko wasn't booked in the main event. Um, so that's one guy that certainly would have gotten a big shot. Um Hopefully, maybe, you know, because the dude was awesome. I always enjoyed him and his work. Too Cold Scorpio maybe would have gotten a chance, but that's probably asking a little bit too much. Um, this is just a couple that I could think of. But there's certainly several, and I would go to some of the smaller guys that never really got a crack at the top um, without either having to significantly roid up or do something else that back then would have certainly gotten opportunities to make main guys, top guys in today's era of wrestling. Chris Matthews asks, what wrestler from the 80s or 90s that was a top star could still thrive in today's wrestling scene? Um, I think Flair would thrive okay until the current generation of fans started to realize, oh shit, every one of his matches is basically the exact same. Like That shtick would have worn off eventually. A Macho Man Randy Savage, I think, would have done tremendously well in today's era. Are you kidding me with his intensity, his execution? Like, he would have. He would have. Uh, Sean and Brett would certainly thrive in today's wrestling scene. How, how appropriate, too, because they'd be top guys at a down period in the business. Um, so you know, there's certainly those guys would, would do well, you know. Um, in terms of guys, other guys in the 80s or 90s, like, it's hard to say because it would depend on the company. It depends on how they book. So when you think about guys like Hogan and Warrior and Andre and Dusty, the McIndoeem, like how would they really work? A Taker would be, obviously, a main event guy today. A Sting probably would have been two. Um, and I know I'm leaving names out, so forgive me, but I just I can't spend the whole time. Like that's almost 
video topic in and of itself, honestly. Uh, so thank you for that question. Got me thinking a little bit. Uh, Wes Wee 122 asks, when did you start to realize Vince was out of touch? I think it was something I started to realize, I think, in the early and mid-2000s. But when it really started to register with me the first time was 2002 in WrestleMania 18. When that dumbass didn't main event Rock and Hogan. And that was the first time that I really truly realized that this guy's grip on reality is not all there. And you can hit me with the, well, the main event had Jericho and Stephanie was involved and his future son-in-law was there, so that makes sense. It made no sense. If you couldn't read the obvious going into that show in Toronto, which has always been a huge Hogan town, and you have peak rock here, that that match had to main event and nothing was going to be able to follow it. That was the first time. And there's kind of other decisions in those next few years, then when it really started to resonate with me just how much out of touch he really was, was WrestleMania 25, a show that I thought had so many things potentially going into it. You know, like it's an anniversary show. Like, this should be a great show. Any mid-cards, Taker and Sean. At that point in time, I said, yeah, he, he's officially lost it. And then 2010 and so many things that happened within that year of wrestling – that's when it really started to dawn on me, ironically, in the lead-up to actually starting to come on here and do YouTube videos about wrestling. That's what it was. Like, yeah, that, that's what it was. It has been building, it had been building up for a number of years throughout the 2000s, but by the end of the decade, I was pretty pretty confident in it. Uh, Keys 10, backstage stuff aside, who would you rather have, God or Be Bret Hart? I give you a four for ten, four out of ten for even asking this question. You don't just merely put the God stuff aside when you talk about Triple H. How can you? And I would still take, well, let me, let me clarify. I take 1997 pissy, whiny, moany, bitchy Team Canada Bret Hart, because that's the closest thing to shoot reality over any version of God, period. But body of work and overall, give me give me God all day. But 97 Bret Hart, woo, woo, woo. I believed in that Bret Hart. That Bret Hart was real to me. That Bret Hart was freaking awesome. Little DJ Boy asks, what happens to the Heyman Reigns alliance when Brock returns? And does Lester win the Rumble match to face Roman at WrestleMania? I think a lot of that depends on if we're getting to a place where we can actually have a certain segment or a certain amount of fans or all fans or no fans at WrestleMania, I think that's where it puts a lot of creative plans potentially in a tough spot for this company over the next couple of months. Um, what happens to the Heyman Reigns alliance? I think uh, Heyman's going to stick with Roman. It's an angle you can play off of. It's a play that you, it's something that you can work off of, but you know, why would you put him back with Lesnar? He's much more interesting with Roman Reigns in part because he's saying less being associated with Roman Reigns. Yet another reason Roman's a baby. So, I, and as far as winning the Rumble to face Roman at Mania, no. Like you're going to do that? You know, I don't even know if you want the Rumble winner to, to face Roman. I think it, you put Roman in a spot at Mania that he's either beating Lesnar clean or he's beating The Rock clean. Let somebody, a legend, a big name, do the job for him and don't tie up the Royal Rumble into that in any way. The King asks, do you still keep tabs on the old OTRS crew? Uh, yes, somewhat via social media, a little bit offline, but not nearly as much as I should. Um, ever since I moved out here in 2013, admittedly have not done the best job of that by any stretch of the imagination. That's all my ass. That's all my fault. Uh, Trinell Sally asks, who would make a better wrestler, Tupac or Obama? Like, this is one of those questions that really caught me off guard. I said, really? We look at Barack Hussein Obama and think of him as a professional wrestler? <laughs> so it's got to be Tupac. Like, just better. Like, if you want to think about what Tupac could have been as a wrestler, think about New Jack, Smoky Mountain Wrestling in the mid-90s. Fantastic. <laughs> O.J. Simpson. Too few. <laughs> So it's got to be Tupac. Diclonius Games, how long do you think wrestlers should pay their dues before getting their big break if they're able to? I don't think there needs to be a clearly defined time. Some people get it. Some people connect with the audience quicker. I think it's all depending on situation, opportunity, timing, and how ready somebody is for that spot. 
Like you could have somebody pay dues for a year and they're ready. Other people pay dues for 10 and they're still not ready. So it shouldn't have to be a clearly defined time frame. Mo Benny 99, what's your opinion on D. Vince Russo and at D. Jim Cornette? Uh, when I look at both of these guys, they are guys that have contributed uh, to some of the great things that we've seen in wrestling over the years. Uh, two guys where the business in a lot of ways I feel like has really passed them got by. You know, kind of the old representation of if you look at our political structure and you say Russo represents the Republicans, Cornette represents the Democrats, probably more true to life than anything, uh, two divergent paths that ultimately arrive in the same place of incompetence, corruption, and idiocracy. I'm not saying they're corrupt, but you get what I'm saying. Like People will be like, oh, I hate the Democrats. And oh, What the fuck's the difference? Come on, just be real. It's a crooked two-party system. Taking divergent paths to get to the same destination. We're all screwed. Um, two divergent paths for Russo and Cornette. It's basically somebody ends up screwed. When I think about it from a wrestling standpoint, they've made as many big stars in the business as I have over the past decade. So sometimes they'll humor you and sometimes they just get grating and annoying. That's the best thing I can say. Grits and gravy. What's a storyline that could have been better if they would have used different wrestlers? Oh, God. Um, storyline that could have been better if they would have used different wrestlers. <sighs> Retribution. <laughs> the answer you were expecting, but retribution. <laughs> Do no, true Norwegian one with the new streaming issues the WWE talent have now. We can see the employee versus independent contractor problems come up again, where even political figures like Yang are taking an interest. If not this, what will be the thing to finally force WWE to make the change? Uh, Vince dying or being removed from from his post. And so much pressure being put on uh, Stephanie and Hunter that they end up having to do it as no choice. And then they try to spin it like this is an incredibly awesome thing and they've been wanting to do it for a long time and the time was finally right. Something like that. Joseph Moran, can you please bring back Marcus Smart? You want him back so bad and yet you misspelled his name. Um, you know, I'll try and reach out to him and see if he's ready to come back. You never know. So stay tuned. Wrestling Rants. Could a Dr. Death push and program with Steve Austin have actually worked if he did win the Brawl for All like WWF hope he would? Um, I'm not buying it. Like, that's a popular story. It's a way to blame Russo for the Brawl for All, and it's it's a way for them to express regret about having Dr. Death in the fold and not doing a program. You really trust Vince to have done something great with Dr. Death? You really think the dynamics of that would have worked all that well with Austin? Would it have really? Ugh, I'm not buying it. I've never bought it. And two decades later, I buy it even less. Jack, 77, 44, 54, 15. Huh? <laughs> what did you think of the final deletion? Cool kind of individual concept that didn't really move the needle for anybody. How about that? Because it didn't. Horror Movie Review 73. Which WrestleMania build-up do you think was better? Hogan versus Andre for WrestleMania 3 or Taker versus Kane for 14? Two great build-ups. I think there was even more history there with Hogan and Andre, so that gets the nod. Also, that one had a contract signing involving Jack Tunney. That always is a tiebreaker. Which WrestleMania match do you think was better? You know, from uh, the story that it told, both were great. You know, from an execution standpoint, you got to go with T Kane and Taker because it's just visually much, much better. Uh, the real being there, but one main event in WrestleMania three, a defining moment for the company in front of 93,000 plus people at the Silver Dome. So it depends on how you define better. The real BN nerd. Do you think you'll ever go back there watching and reviewing Impact? I would not count on it right now. Danny Boy, in your opinion, why does WrestleMania 27 uh, get to be considered one of the worst WrestleManias because of the main event? But WrestleMania 9 main event was worse on so many levels when Hogan won the title. Uh, both shows suck. Both shows historically are top five worst of all time. So I'm not sure what you're really angling at here. Um, because WrestleMania 27 sucked. But it wasn't necessarily because of the finish to that main event. That show just sucked. And WrestleMania 9 was just god-awful brutal bad, and the finish just made it all the worse. Uh, what the fuck is a Mannix? Excuse me, WTF is a Mannix, ass. You got to pick one of two to represent your mid-card division. The Memphis mid-card piece of crap or or. The answer is or. The answer will always be or. Even though you wanted to be the a-hole and put Matt Riddle at the end of that or. Still. 
It's Matt Riddle. It is not that 10,000 guitar breaking, no money drawing Memphis mid card piece of crap. And you would beg you, Jackie Fargo. And you would beg you, Rick Flair. A certain drop jerk position, piece of crap. Ah, uh, now that I, now I went and did it. Now a lot of you are going to be like, oh my god, I miss that so much. Why? Why would you do that to me? Hopefully you never, ever, ever have to have that again. <sighs> Kill Link Musha Deed. I hope I said your name right. Apologies if I didn't. What's your favorite Chris Jericho match? Do you think he's one of the GOATs after being in the business for 30 years? Um, I think he's a legend. One of the GOATs. Like, longevity does not all automatically equal to true greatness. I think about it like in football. Frank Gore has put up some really nice numbers, but he's a stat compiler. He'll be in the Hall of Fame. I don't have any major issue with that because he had a very good career. But you know, a guy like that is certainly not at the same level to me of guys like Ladinian Tomlinson or AP or Marshawn Lynch even, um, or let alone like some of the other truly uh, kind of all-time backs like Barry Sanders and Jim Brown or Walter Payton. You know, he's a stat compiler. I think Jericho's a time compiler in a lot of ways, but certainly been a star in his own right for many, many years. Provided me a lot of entertainment in wrestling over the years. My favorite Chris Jericho match is probably him and Sean at WrestleMania. That was textbook, like, fantastic stuff. What year was that? 2003, 19, was it? That was so good on so many different levels. Um, so that's probably my favorite Jericho match is him and Sean. Yeah, I, I think so. I think that's got to be it. Um, so anyways, thanks to all of you guys that submitted your questions for this Q&A video. Appreciate them and hope you enjoyed my answers. Be back doing it again, I'm sure, next week. Uh, in the meantime, subscribe, click the bell, like this video, share it with others, do all that other crap. And I'll have some more videos coming up soon, so stay tuned. See ya.